somebody who has been on a prolonged fasting say for 7 to 10 days or who is malnourished is brought to the emergency department and knowing the patient has been starving you start feeding him by mouth or through feeding tube or even through the intravenous route. Three, four days passed and you start seeing various signs and symptoms of electrolyte disturbances including cardiac arrhythmias and the patient may die at this point. If the patient survive, then various neurological complications may follow. This is refeeding syndrome. So refeeding syndrome can be defined as severe electrolyte and fluid shifts associated with metabolic abnormalities in malnourished patients undergoing refeeding. It can be associated with significant morbidity and mortality. The clinical features are fluid balance abnormalities, abnormal glucose metabolism, hypophosphatemia, hypomagnesemia, and hypokalemia. In general, those individuals with marasmus or kosher core are at risk for the refeeding syndrome, particularly if there is greater than 10% weight loss over a couple of months. Patients are also at risk if they have not been fed for 7 to 10 days with evidence of stress and depletion. However, more specifically, this syndrome also has been described after prolonged fasting, massive weight loss in obese patients, including after duodenal switch operations, chronic alcoholism, prolonged intravenous fluid repletion, and anorexia nervosa. Electrolyte disturbances can take place within the first few days of refeeding, cardiac complications within the first week, and delirium and other neurologic features generally afterward. So, it is important to closely monitor at-risk patients, in particular their vital functions, fluid balance, plasma electrolytes, including magnesium and phosphate. Electrocardiographic monitoring can be useful in facilitating the detection of live threatening arrhythmias. A tachycardia has been reported to be a useful sign in detecting cardiac stress in refeeding syndrome. Plasma electrolyte, in particular sodium, potassium, phosphate and magnesium should be monitored before and during refeeding as should plasma glucose and urinary electrolytes. Before refeeding, electrolyte disorders should be corrected and the circulatory volume carefully restored. In practice, this can delay administration of nutrition but usually can be accomplished within the first 12 to 24 hours. Vitamins and trace element deficiencies also should be corrected. And one vitamin of specific importance is thiamine. 50 to 250 milligram of thiamine should be given at least 30 minutes before refeeding is instigated. The calorie repletion should be very slow at approximately 20 kilocalories per kg body weight per day or on average 
1,000 kilocalories per day initially, along with vitamins and trace element supplementations. So the main learning point here is that somebody who is on a prolonged fasting or who is malnourished came to us, we should not right away give their otherwise normal calorie requirement per day. We should rather restrict the calorie intake and increase slowly over the coming days. Along with a strict electrolyte and cardiac monitoring before initiating the refeeding as well as during the refeeding.